have a genetic uh, disorder, which means that I haven't got the correct levels of hormones in my body. So right from 18, I was aware that, that I wouldn't be able to conceive. So for me, I must say that I feel like I was spared the long and tedious infertility treatments journey. Um, I made peace with the fact that adoption would be my journey. And I think it doesn't work for everybody, but when my husband and I found that we knew right from the beginning when we were dating that that was our future. And I feel very privileged to share a life with somebody who didn't have an issue with it because it really can be something which is very divisive. Um, I've read a lot of, of stories of, of people who have battled to be on the same page with adoption. I also think it's different for, for men because while an adoptive mother has to go through an acceptance process, I think, uh, a father, when it's a genetic connection, I think that it's all, it seems to me to be almost easier for a man to connect with his genetic child and I think it takes the most amazing kind of man to take a child who is not his biological child. I mean, it's so I've seen amazing things and he's just an incredible father, so yeah. It was not through an agency, but through child welfare. He was at a children's home, he was placed at birth, so with child welfare, cross-cultural adoptions can only happen from six months. So we were contacted as soon as there was a possibility that, that he could come to us. When we got the call, it was very sudden and I was at my sister-in-law's baby shower the day before and her friends and I had been chatting about, well, what would happen with my preparations because we were, we were getting ready at that point. We didn't know when, but we were preparing ourselves. There's a lot of questions that people ask regarding cross-cultural adoption. There were questions that we considered. Can be a, a stigma in families, friendship groups. It was something that we were aware of, but to be honest, we haven't experienced with any of our friends or family any sort of reservations. I think in our environment today in this country, we have too many mothers who do not feel supported, too many mothers who are in desperate situations, who would love to place their children and, and know that there are families who are looking for a, a child to raise. I think it needs to become much more part of our agenda. I do think that we need to become more of a, a society which accepts and supports the whole journey. I think there's got to be a lot more change legislatively and, and just practically in assisting with the whole process which can be quite burdensome and it should be more accessible to people. There are many, many children who need loving homes and many women who need the support of the society that they live in. Tyriel is quite frankly the biggest gift we've ever been given. It's, it, I remember feeling the day after we found out, I'll never be able to ask the universe for anything else because like this is just, it's almost too much to, to know that you've been given a gift like this because it just doesn't happen to everybody. And he's, he's literally an angel. We've given him a name which in angel law means uh, uh, the Archangel of Justice. And he, I believe he's there to right the wrongs that maybe came from a background which wasn't as, as perfect as we'd love it to have been, but we're going to try and change that. So we, we just adore him.